So, you've decided to send Rush Hour. Movie opens on what seems like 30 minutes of dialogue-free, hot Chinese longshoreman action. Crates are moving, baby! And there were boats! And they're dark! Pointing things out on the screen cliché? Pointing things out on the screen cliché. What the f*** is this rando shooting at? He wasn't on deck when all this went down between Lee and Sang, and he has no f clue what's going on, let alone who he's shooting at. Manipulating a scene again, are we? First of all, when Sang ran, he spoke Chinese, alerting the guards on the boat to Lee's presence. <laughs> And second, while you were pointing out things on the screen, the movie was showing you that every guard on the boat is wearing a gray suit, meaning Lee's black clothing gave him away as the intruder. Holy shit, it's blonde miles from Lost. Usually I would say, Jeremy makes a pop culture ref while cutting myself off humorously, but this time we're not going to do that. You see, Jeremy has mentioned Lost so many goddamn times, this prompts the creation of a new cliche. Jeremy wants everyone to know he's seen Lost cliche. It's worth 10 cents. I will sorely miss the unshakable support you've given the Royal Hong Kong Police. Oh, so it's the last day of British rule in Hong Kong, and there are international politics and diplomatic retirement ceremonies, and goddamn, anything that doesn't involve Jackie Chan in the opening of this movie is as boring as the trade agreement scenes in Phantom Menace. How about no? Nothing is as boring as that bullshit. Nothing, I tell you. I'd rather watch Joe Biden try to remember how to count. It happens to be, as Barack says, a three-letter word. Jobs. J-O-B-S. Jobs. Unkeepable promises. It isn't an unkeepable promise if the promise was kept. I mean, Sue Young survived her encounter with the triad specifically due to Lee's actions, so everything was okay. Lee didn't even know he was going to run into Sue Young, so does he just carry this around in his pocket, ready to give it to a special person at a moment's notice? This is just wrong. The movie shows that Lee and Sue Young have a very close relationship as he mentors her and teaches her how to fight. The dialogue between the two in this scene reveals that Lee wasn't going to America with her and her father and that he was waiting for the right time to tell her about it. The necklace was the parting gift for that conversation. Also, Chris Tucker's excuse for being late was that he wanted to do this transfer of explosives in the back of the diner, which makes all the sense in the world, even though it was bullshit. Why are they doing this out in the front parking lot in front of God and everyone? You're asking a question that the movie itself asks, meaning when Carter says, Man, I told you the back of the day you thought I was gonna do this shit up front, man. Are you crazy? I'm gonna get busted. You crazy? I was in the diner. You weren't in the I diner. I said in the back of the... It... The movie is saying doing this out front is a bad idea. I'm gonna blow his head all over the freaking parking lot. With that trigger discipline, I'm surprised you haven't already. Jeremy expects a petty criminal to have trigger discipline. So Chris Tucker allows two cops to get shot because he's trying not to blow his cover? What a terrible f***ing undercover officer. How did he ever even qualify for this kind of work? It's almost like you read cliff notes of this scene and are criticizing the film based on those truncated notes. Carter does not allow two cops to get shot. They did that to themselves by not properly reading the situation. In any case, Carter gets reprimanded for the situation anyway. <laughs> I'm sure Cobb is trying to disable the cop car here, but he does remember there's a f ton of C4 in the trunk of his car, right? And what's your point? Are you under the assumption that C4 can be detonated by simply jarring it? Dude, C4 is probably the safest explosive in existence. You can actually set it on fire and it won't explode because C4 requires a detonator. In fact, the real sin here is that Carter detonates the C4 by shooting the trunk because that's supposed to be next to impossible. Given that their main and really own purpose is violently exploding, you might be surprised to learn that most explosives utilized by the military are shockingly stable. In fact, C4 won't even explode if you set it on fire and then you shoot it. Indeed, beyond the benefit of being able to shape the explosive in a variety of ways to accomplish a given destructive goal, one of the main reasons plastic explosives like C4 are utilized so extensively by the military is precisely because they are largely inert and can be handled without specialized equipment. Man, the LA Chinese consulate looks an awful lot like a regular ass LA mansion. This looks like one of the places Vincent Chase lived in an entourage. Eh, it's not that far off from the actual Chinese consulate here in my hometown of Los Angeles, but you just compared Wayne Manor to a mansion in entourage. That's worth these many sins. <laughs> Jeremy makes a La La Land pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the- Long before it was even accredited, Su Young clearly attended the Prometheus School of Running Away From Things. Erroneous! Erroneous! Erroneous on both counts! I'm calling bullshit here because when Soo Young gets out of the vehicle, she actually makes a turn and is then caught by a person on a motorbike that she had no prior knowledge was there. Damn, you can't even cinema sense properly. Lamp, 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 lamp. Pointing things out on the screen. 
I would like one of my people to help. No, he's told no and the movie ends here, right? Do ambassadors get to make demands about American investigations? Are you unaware of what a consulate is? Their entire purpose is diplomacy. In other words, peaceful cooperation. Theoretically, not cooperating here could lead to an international event between America and China. Therefore, the FBI facetiously agrees to allow Lee on the case to placate China. He's already on the plane. I trust you will treat him with the same courtesy as you have shown me. Asking forgiveness instead of permission. I'm pretty sure Drake said to never ask permission, only ask forgiveness. And considering he owns a Bugatti and you said BVS would outdo Civil War, I'm going with him. I work alone. I don't want no partner. I don't need no partner. And I ain't gonna never have no partner. Partner shadowing. Partner shadowing. Dangerous out there. It's safer for you to be right here behind the desk. That's racist. Of course, this is CinemaSins' gag meant to imply that this was sexist on Carter's part. But he isn't implying that Johnson should remain behind a desk because she's a woman. It's because she isn't very experienced with undercover detective work as she is a bomb squad expert. Two officers were shot. One man lost a pinky. You could show me only this clip and tell me it's a bad boys movie and I would believe you. <clears throat> That's racist. The truth Simon. is, this is an FBI operation and I don't need any help from the LAPD or some Chungking cop. You got it? Why'd Warren go through all the subterfuge to make Carter feel important if he were just gonna drop this shit about how useless he is like a minute later? Because Carter saw through the subterfuge, so he decided to drop the act. Lee is a foreign detective. He's a personal friend of the consuls. Now, it's your job to keep him out of sight and away from danger, you understand? Yeah, I understand you want me to babysit somebody, but I don't do that. I, I came down here for the, the big truth assignment. The is, this is an FBI operation, and I don't need any help from the LAPD or some Chungking cop. Okay, I guess I can get behind the traditional East Asian music being played during Jackie Chan's scenes, but a gong sound when it cuts to him? It really is amazing that a director like Brett Ratner wouldn't have more cultural sensitivity to his characters. How about the gong is just a part of the song? And I cannot possibly understand how using an Asian instrument to signify the entrance of an Asian character is insensitive. I mean, Lee is not Asian American, as that would be an instance this could be construed as racially insensitive. And now Mr. rice -roni. Well, definitely racist the way he meant it, but rice roni as everyone knows, is the San Francisco treat. We're in LA right now. Yeah, but the joke was clearly about the rice part of rice -roni. In any case, are you suggesting that rice -roni can only be eaten or mentioned in San Francisco? Because that shit doesn't make sense at all. I'll be right back. You might see one of your cousins walking around here. I'll be right back. God, it's been a while since I saw this. Is the whole movie Chris Tucker being racist and we just laugh because it's not real racism? I mean, yeah. The whole point of this movie is to show how these two become like brothers and Carter growing up and realizing that he needs a partner. These movies poke fun at racial stereotypes as a whole. Hell, Lee later throws back some black jokes at Carter and it was still funny. Go figure. I like to let people talk who like to talk. It makes it easier to find out how full of sh they are. Jeez, imagine what Lee would think if he sat through an entire CinemaSins video. Would never happen, because like all intelligent people, the only time he'd watch a CinemaSins video is when the Birdman has made a video about it. I'm the president, I'm the emperor, I'm the king. Those are all different things, man. Though some modern day world leaders also struggle to tell the difference between them. That is how you take a shot at Trump. Chris Tucker decided that if he was going to make it in this industry, he needs to follow the exact dialogue model of Will Smith. Later in the movie, he's going to punch someone while yelling, Welcome to Earth! Even though it will have nothing to do with the movie itself. Conflating Chris Tucker with Will Smith specifically, that's racist. That doesn't have a cigarette, man. This cigar weed! <laughs> Remember 1998, when there were still draconian marijuana laws and states were still able to arrest and prosecute for small amounts of weed? <laughs> it's hilarious to think that any of the states would do that these days. Yeah, we're not stupid, CinemaSins. We understand that you mean the opposite of what you're saying. My question, though, is what the hell does that have to do with this movie? What's up, my Man, I'm kind of angry they convinced Jackie Chan to say this for laughs. It played okay in 1998, but it doesn't hold up so much today, man. This is making me cringe. You know what makes me cringe? When self-righteous white people attempt to speak for black people. As a black person who has spent the majority of his life around black people, I'm pretty confident we love the Rush Hour movies and these types of jokes within them near unanimously. I'm not even sure you can find a black person that didn't find this scene funny, especially because Lee immediately faces repercussions. Look, I'm always down for a Jackie Chan versus the world group fight, but this dude that just threw him didn't hear the offensive language, right? He just saw Lee do what he needed to do to get out of a chokehold. So what's his beef? Except he clearly did, which is why when he grabbed Lee, you can hear him audibly say, 
You might think I'm going to send the Daily Market sign, but I considered someone named Daily, like John Daly, might own it. And I googled and found a store named this in LA. So instead, I'm sending the fact that this store specializing in milk, meat, and Mexican food has a huge rack of please steal me toilet paper rolls outside the store in an area of town where they cage up the store at night. Bit of trivia here for you. This is a real market in Los Angeles, and my late Uncle Mickey actually worked at this market for years. What does that have to do with this sin? Well, just about as much as whatever the hell Jeremy was trying to do with this sin. I mean, he clearly was suggesting that it was easy to steal this toilet paper, but it's almost as if he's ignoring the man sitting right next to it. Even if he knew he had to sneak in here to get to his boss, did he really need to kick so much ass in the process? Everyone here is a good guy whether they work for the consul or the FBI. Giving himself up and demanding to speak to the consul would get us to the same place we are now anyway, no? The FBI doesn't want Lee to be there in the first place. That was the entire point of them hiring Carter to keep him busy. If Lee would have given himself up, they probably would have detained him and kept him from the ambassador. I just want to be able to tell the consul who is responsible for his daughter's death because he talked too much. Sure, Carter has a motor mouth, but he really hasn't said much besides repeating the instructions since Sang told him not to sing, right? Here's a supercut of all the things Carter said that would piss off a terrorist. Give me the, phone. the FBI? Yeah, this is the FBI. Carter. $50 million? And who do you think you kidnapped Chelsea Clinton? And 10 million in tents. You want any fives with that? What's your name, man? You called us. Why you want to know my name? All right, look, man. All right, hold up, hold up. Calm down, calm down. I'm trying to hook you up, man. I'm on your side, man. I'm going to get you the money. I'm going to make sure you get the money and we can spend it together, you know, when you get it, because I don't even I don't even really work for them. I know they think this car tried to run them over, but are they sure it's Sang's gang? Like, he just shot at a random car in this alley, right? Jeremy just said they think this car tried to run them over. Let's look at the scene to see if he was right. Yep, that looks like trying to run them over, if you ask me. I'm sorry about spreading all those rumors on Christmas about us sleeping together. I'm sorry. What? See, this is what I like to call an easy joke, a.k.a. the Family Guy joke. It's a sudden shock delivered via a throwaway tone, and it's literally only for the audience. No one inside the movie enjoys this or thinks it's funny, except maybe Carter, and it casts her character as a sex object instead of a scientist just after she helped them. I'd say Carter is misogynist, but then the movie was directed by Brett Ratner, so maybe there's blame to go around. All right, I'm about to get on a soapbox here, so strap the f*** in. First of all, duh, this is a movie. Literally everything you see is for the audience. That's the problem with Cinema Sins. You almost always fail to account for movies doing things for the benefit of the audience. I mean, I cannot understand how you watch a comedy film where the main character is a real-life stand-up comedian and expect there not to be jokes like this. Moreover, this joke isn't treating Johnson like a sex object, nor does this make Carter misogynist. It expresses the sexual tension between two characters that clearly have feelings for each other. Carter makes this joke specifically because everyone in the precinct knows Johnson likes Carter, so he's just teasing her about it. It's really annoying when people watch 20 plus year old movies and try to apply current year progressive buzzwords and ideology to them, especially when it comes from hypocrites like CinemaSins. Are you not the same people who just five years ago were saying women not giving lap dances and being your girlfriends were things wrong with the movies you were sending. Finally get some actionable intelligence about the kidnapping, and now they decide to stand around bonding over Edwin Starr instead of at least going into the restaurant to see what's going on. Carter says something about scoping the place out and they're doing jack sh other than building a paper-thin rapport that's supposed to make us believe they're closed for the rest of the movie. See what I mean about CinemaSins failing to account for movies doing things for the audience? Almost always, they complain when a movie doesn't show characters bonding, saying the movie moved too fast or that we didn't get pertinent information. But when a film does do it, they complain about it, saying it's paper-thin. Listen, man, I've made friends playing Call of Duty. Surviving a fight to the death and a shootout together kind of makes you friends for life as far as I'm concerned. Take the money to the alley behind the Fu Jiao restaurant in Chinatown. So basically, they would have gotten the location of the bad guys anyway if they'd just waited for the call, right? And here we have Jeremy just watching the movie yet again. This is the point the movie brings up in a later scene. Just let me explain. I'll start from the top. We were making the drop. Han was about to get his daughter back and you two screwed it up. My daddy wants to arrest 15 people in one night by himself. Why did you arrest 25 by himself? This goes on for some time, and I continue to ask, why are they not approaching the goddamn restaurant? Well, if you were actually paying attention, you'd know that they were waiting for Sang to make an appearance. I mean, Carter literally answers this question. What are we waiting for? We scoping the place out, man. We ain't gonna just run up in there. That's how you get shot. So Lee calls this guy around the corner, who's carrying a tray of food. Then next we see, it's Lee in the uniform with the tray of food completely intact. Now how do you assault and subdue a waiter and steal his uniform without the tray ever falling or the food spilling? That is impossible. This is Jackie f***ing Chan. What you call impossible, he calls Thursday. This dude has environmental feats that would make Bruce Lee blush. Come on, this way, God. 
Is there a reason that they're running from the feds right now? Couldn't they use their help? The FBI has been trying to keep them from this investigation the entire time, and they just ruined an opportunity to get Sue Young back. They're lucky they're not being arrested. No, no longer on this assignment, Carter. Case closed. Those two things did not even mean the same thing, and the case is not closed. All right, I've had enough. I need to jump in here. This fucking guy thinks Agent Russ is saying Sue Young's case is closed instead of the argument he is having with Carter. That Jeremy thinks the phrase case closed isn't uttered in any other instance besides an actual legal investigation should tell you everything you need to know about CinemaSense's critical thinking skills. Whatever. Ah yes, the 90s, where Hollywood had yet to learn that there is no dial tone when someone hangs up on you. Now, I cannot speak for all movies, but for movies that take place in California, this is actually accurate. I'll let Sarah Autumn and Tom Scott explain this one. Supervision is the word that describes how a telephone switch knows whether the calling and called parties are on hook or off hook. Now, the reason that a sound director would use a dial tone instead of just nothing is kind of obvious, right? It's to make it clear that the other side is hung up. As I finish dialing, the call will connect. And it can be answered. Now, in the step system, it doesn't have what's called far end supervision. And that means that the called party can hang up and pick up again as many times as they want and the call won't disconnect. But if the calling party hangs up, the called party will get hit with dial tone right away because the system doesn't know whether I've been hung up on or whether I just picked up the phone. So in Hollywood, where all the movies were being written and filmed, their experience on the telephone was actually different from most of the rest of America and the world, which, let's be honest, is kind of like so many other things in Hollywood. The bottom line is, the folks making the movies really did get a dial tone when they were hung up on, at least sometimes. So they put that in their films, or they picked whichever option worked best for the scene. Holy sh once again, the FBI is just paying the hell up with no contingency plan. John Tao might as well pull a Dr. Evil and ask for- Wait, what was that? The FBI is just paying the hell up with no contingency plan. One more time. No contingency plan. Contingency? Contingency, 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 contingency. <laughs> Cavassier Pharmaquai. Cam, P Bills. Vanilla Mumma Nums. Monkey Necks. Beaver Age. Ruches and Combis. Rosasa Puffas. Original Skitiddly. Yo, they know what Sang looks like, and he's got a very distinctive style. How is his picture not on every agent's radar right now, let alone the fact that he's in the building? Incorrect. The FBI hasn't once seen Sang, as only Lee knew of his connection to Jung Tao. As the FBI has essentially refused to listen to Lee or Carter this entire film, nope. Do you ever get annoying when you see someone smoking a cigarette when they're filling up their car with gas? I sure do. So imagine the rage you'd feel at this asshole who's currently horking down a Marlboro Red right next to six blocks of C4. As explained earlier, even setting fire to C4 wouldn't cause it to explode. So once again, CinemaSense doesn't know what the dick they're talking about. So from what I understand, this is one old guy, a dude with a newsie, and a couple other waiters versus around 20 trained federal agents. And the former is winning? This one old guy is Jung Tao, a leader within the triads. I'm pretty sure being a white guy and making it to the top of the triads means you've got some skills, yo. <laughs> That old bastard climbed all that way up this super tall ladder while lugging the heavy ass suitcase full of money? I agree. No, really, I do. But this is everything wrong with CinemaSins, and you did that fing laugh. Oh man, I'll be right back. Carla! I was just playing. But why? It's not funny. You're literally risking his life for a joke that isn't funny to anyone watching, and definitely not to anyone inside the movie. What freaking theater did you watch this movie in where this didn't get a laugh? Oh wait, you're in Tennessee, and Chris Tucker is. The you know what? Never mind. Many, many minutes of outtakes, but very few involve Jackie Chan stunts gone slightly wrong. That's the we stay for, damn it, not Chris Tucker flubbing his lines. Imagine sending the outtakes in a Rush Hour movie for any reason at all. Oh wait, you're in Tennessee and Chris Tucker is... You know what? Never mind. What's the name of this dog? Feel good fit. Jackie, kick it. Okay, Chris Tucker. <laughs> Jackie, kick it. Jackie again? Oh. No. Jackie, we'd like to see that. We, we'd like to see that. Now, Jackie, we'd love to see that. Wouldn't we love to see that? His name is Lee, goddammit. Well, Lee, we would love to see that. <laughs> Thank you.